Barry's first taste of battle was only a skirmish against a small rear guard of Frenchmen who occupied an orchard beside a road down which a few hours later the English main force would wish to pass. Though this encounter is not recorded in any history books, it was memorable enough for those who took part. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Saladino. Dreams what I'm chasing. Blow hot is chasing. This is why I'm hot. No, that is why I'm blazing. Del I've said this before. You don't need Kabutis' Sweet Baby Ink Steam Detected list to know that Sweet Baby Ink worked on a game. All you have to do is look at the character designs. You look at the main protagonist, who's going to be a woman, and you'll know right away she's going to be a black woman or a person of color, and you're going to know right away that. Either Sweet Baby Ink worked on it, or Black Girl Gamers, or there's somebody who's obsessed with DEI worked on the game that's going to be infected with it just on its appearance. Because everything about them, obviously, is surface. Um, if you don't pre-order games, you can check the first few minutes of the game on YouTube, and you're going to know right away. Certainly, uh, it's this is true in the case of Flintlock. I know it's had a terrible launch. If you could even call it a launch, it's sort of released with a thud. When it dropped, it hit with a thud. And I watched some of Synthetic Man and uh, Vara Dark and Friend of the Channel, Giga Vega, play the game. And the first thing that stood out to me is the main character, Nor's dumpy butt. <laughs> it's exactly the kind of ass Sweet Baby Ink insists on giving female protagonists. They did it to Harley Quinn. You look at the side-by-side -side of Harley from Arkham Knight and the Harley from Suicide Squad, and it's clear Sweet Baby Ink's Harley is everything these DEI sociopaths want in gaming. <laughs> Look at MJ's ass in Spider-Man 2 Electric Boogaloo. Sweet Baby Ink worked on Spider-Man 2 Electric Boogaloo. All the signs of SBI or DEI are plain for all to see because feminists are not interested in making their ideas appealing. The whole idea behind feminism these days is to force men to accept it. Just to accept feminism. Just accept women in male spaces, to control those spaces, not just, oh, you know, let some women join and let them play games, let them be a fan, that kind of thing. No, it's you need to accept us as the dominant voice and the dominant force in your male hobby, your largely male hobby. I remember there was a journal a few years back. I don't know. She might have been with Kotaku as a woman, and she was insisting that even more games than the ones that are already coming out, even more of them should feature female protagonists. But in the same article, this journal started to complain about the fact that, yeah, so we need more women in games, more women being the protagonists. But the problem is what's going to happen is that man is just going to play the games and they're going to be staring at the main character's ass all the time. Yeah, if you make it a third person game, then all the misogynist gamers are going to do is just stare at her ass. So they're uh, like Sweet Baby Inc. in particular. And this happens in comic books, too. Their whole deal is to make these women have dumpy butts to make them look almost masculine in their shape so that, yeah, you're going to have to play as a woman, but she's going to also be unattractive. I keep saying this. Pick a struggle. You want even more women starring in games. And I think that's already asking way too much because there's plenty of games starring female leads. And that's fine. It's not really a problem with it, but there's so many of it now because it's not genuine and organic. It's because feminists are demanding it. It's like, as a man, you need to have empathy for women. So you need to play games with women, but they also can't be attractive because we don't want them to be appealing. I said this about Concord. If they really wanted to, the Concord devs could have done a better job at making these characters appealing. They could have still done everything they wanted to do as far as DEI with, it, uh, with regards to like the pronouns. They wanted to make non-binary characters and have a lot of black women in it. 
They could have done that, but still make them attractive and appealing. Even the body positivity characters, they could have made them look better. Daw looks ridiculous. They didn't have to make Daw look like that. But they want these characters to be unappealing. I do feel like this is some kind of psyop to make black people and body positivity people and LGBT characters or people look bad. Because they're so unreasonable about it. And I don't know, they just, they don't want these women to be appealing in particular. And uh, they make them insufferable girl bosses and Mary Sue's. And then they give them square shaped asses and bitchy faces. And you look at this character from Flintlock, the main girl, Noor. She looks kind of like Zendaya. And I think Zendaya is cute. But they gave this woman a hard version of Zendaya's face. It made her look like a gremlin. She's a little bit darker. And she has this stupid hairstyle. I hate her hairstyle. And again, she has this hard face. And it's not battle hardened or anything. You know, she's not a, it's not like, oh, she has the thousand yard stare from being on the battlefield kind of hard. It's just very hard and unpleasant. It's the face feminists want their characters to have to let you know that the female protagonist won't fuck you. <laughs> I said this about Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn. Aloy wasn't the most charming or charismatic character in the world, but she was a lot more pleasant and good natured and a lot more appealing. In Forbidden West, they turned her into a lump of coal and literally took all of her potential love interests from her. I always say this. She had like three boyfriends or four boyfriends and one girlfriend. In Forbidden West, she's like, they had one little moment where she was trying to flirt and then they took that away and that was it. She was just boring, dull for the rest of that day of going game. Because you're not supposed to find female characters sexy or appealing in DEI games. You're not even supposed to like them. You're just supposed to be intimidated by them. Entertainment is one of the worst places to force this stupid activist agenda into because all people have to do is not buy your shit. You can force dev studios to hire you and make changes like turning your OG white woman protagonist into a strong, angry looking black woman. But that's not going to get people to buy it. Even the idiots on Twitter who push this shit won't buy the game. They don't care about video games. It's not their hobby. Their hobby is just attacking gamers. So with Flintlock, apparently, before Sweet Baby Inc. got involved, the main character was white. She was a woman, but she was a white woman. I don't know if she still had the same boring outfit with the square dumpy ass that's meant to defeat the male gaze. Um, she probably did. But I'm pretty sure they still had this Seven Years War, French Indian War aesthetic mixed with World War One. I. I don't know, this weird marching band aesthetic, like with Captain Marvel, her new costume. I don't know. I guess the military look isn't feminine, so it's perfect for feminist character designs. Uh, Nor she, the, the main character, she looks boring and dull. Her hair, her face, her facial expression, the outfit, her figure, it's just dull. And it screams, are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? When the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? So, it's funny that they say that about the male characters and uh, expressing the full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability. One of the things that I thought was so egregious about Flintlock, at least what I've saw so far, you just go to the opening of the game, and right off the bat, the game starts, um, you know, you're on the uh, title screen, and they have the nerve to have Nor posed with her back to the camera. You know, she's got this depressing, dumpy rump, and they're daring you to say something about her lack of ass. It's like they're saying, yeah, yeah, this is what you want to see, but you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get this. And then after, you know, somebody, the narrative talks about, gives you a sense of what's going on in this world and this timeline, you immediately get these three girl bosses. It's ridiculous. So this one cannoneer, a man who tells the people, you know, get, get the cannons ready. But then the actual cannoneer who's like, ready, aim, fire. It's a woman. Just right off the bat, there's a woman screaming. Then you have this other woman who's, I guess, the field marshal or whatever. Not only is she a woman, so she's this woman dressed like some kind of Austrian or Prussian general or something. This military commander. And she's a POC, of course. She's a person of color. She's a woman. And she's just surveying the battlefield. And then you have Norse show up. 
and she's talking. So again, talk about these like how they the men expressing uh, vulnerability and blah blah blah. Well, the, this guy is like, I don't know what to do. Nor what's going on. The field commander's going to yell at you. Whatever's going on. And Nora's just girl bossing it, like, don't worry about it, I got this. And she's insisting that she is the one who has to go take the, the lead because these men are not ready. But she is. It is just, you have, right at the beginning, three girl bosses. And the weird thing about SJWs and Cancel Pigs and SBI, Sweet Baby Inc., is they do this thing where they don't like having one main protagonist be special or be the cool one that everybody gravitates to. And I don't mean that everybody around that character should be uh, flat cardboard cutouts or flat like Nora's ass. But Nora should be the girl boss. If they're going to do a girl boss, don't do three girl bosses right off the bat. As soon as you see that, you know, yeah, this is Sweet Baby Ink. Yeah, this is DEI. I don't want to play this game. I'm not, you're, I'm offended that you would think I'm so stupid that I need to play a game that has a bunch of women running this battlefield. And it's not just the main character. It's one thing if you have Nord doing this. And even if you, you know, once again, we got a black woman lead now in games like this. You can't make a game without a black woman leading it. And she can't be attractive. And she can't be cool and fun and appealing. She's got to be a, uh, an asshole. But at least you're selling your DEI on this one character. You're showing that there's one black woman in this world. Who could be doing cool stuff. And it lets the player. If you do a good job at least. Come to appreciate this character. But no if everybody's a girl boss. What's the point of one girl boss? If everybody's a girl boss. Why is Nora a girl boss? If her boss is a girl boss. And if the cannon lady who's yelling fire is a girl boss. I don't know. It's just. <sighs> this game fell flat on his face. When it came out. It's on the uh, Steam Sweet Baby Ink detected list. But again. Even if Krabutis got shut down, I'm not saying he should be shut down, but even if Krabutis' website and the Steam list was shut down, you can see DEI coming from a mile away. You know what it means. And the recent failure of Concord and the failure of Flintlock, it goes beyond just whether or not they're good games. It really does have to do with DEI and with the entire mentality surrounding it. Gamers are not asking for this. This is being forced by developers who should be caring about making sales and keeping their studios open. But instead, they're worried about a political agenda. It makes no sense, but whatever. They can keep losing. Fuck said to speak, Mr. Me, Siamese, even Christ said Christ, he flows quite nicely. Hype beast, highly likely to bite me and try to high five me, but I just give him high threes, cause y'all don't get to. Touch me on the shit, sue me, if you got an issue, grab a tissue. Mediocrity is odd to me, 